Good to go. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I want to welcome you all to the SFS 2021 SRC panel discussion. Um, and so, you know, as you all know, and we've seen this awesome logo uh, that, that one of the students made, um, this is freshwater science in a time of transformation. And so uh, I'm the, the chair of the undergraduate affairs committee. And so we really you know, like this idea of transformation, there's a lot of undergraduate students that are sort of transitioning into, you know, potentially graduate school, but also this is a first time for any of you being at uh, one of these meetings. Having a virtual meeting is a totally different experience, and I'm sure that you've experienced some of the challenges that come with sort of transformation. And so uh, the, the previous workshop that we had last Sunday, um, some awesome members of my committee um, sort of had a and I'll share the YouTube video with, with folks later, but basically trying to find your way um, through this virtual conference. And then this is kind of a follow-up that's maybe a little bit more broad, letting you all ask any questions that you have um, sort of in general about the SRC. Um, and on this um, first slide here, we have our email address. So this is sfs.uac at gmail.com. If you have any questions about sort of undergraduate affairs, if you just need help throughout the meeting, there's that. There's also going to be a, a link, a QR code for a group me that we've got. And there's definitely going to be some other resources that you'll hear about today. So uh, with that, we'll, uh, we'll kind of get started here. So just an overview, I will talk a little bit about the affairs committee. Um, I'll do some um, introductions of myself and then the, the other moderator as well as our panelists. And then we're hoping for about 30 minutes for a, a true open Q&A in this panel discussion. Um, I have a couple of things to plug with the last five minutes um, and that should bring us right about to 5.30. Um, and at that point, uh, we'll stop the recording, but if you have other questions that you wanna kind of be able to ask it more anonymously, um, you'll have that opportunity. Um, and just some general notes here, stay muted so we don't accidentally record you. Um, go ahead and type any questions that you have, if you have them now, or if you have them sort of as folks are introducing themselves, type them in the general chat. Um, and myself and Lauren Banks are going to be the moderators. So uh, feel free to send us direct messages if you want to ask your questions anonymously. And then again, I have that email address. Uh, we want to make sure that any unanswered questions, you've got a chance to, to answer them. So uh, feel free to email us. So with that, um, the undergraduate Graduate Affairs Committee. So this is the committee that I'm chairing. I've now chaired for two years and I was so excited to sort of um, rebrand from an undergraduate awards to undergraduate affairs. So basically, you know, we normally would give out the undergraduate travel awards because we've had these virtual meetings. We really wanted to sort of transform what we were doing and try to really just support undergraduates in any way that we can. Um, so we want to serve the undergraduates, but also new student members. Um, so that can include graduate students, um, I need to highlight the members of my committee. So that's Brenna, Brittany, Emily, Laura, Michelle, Phoenix, and Steven. Um, they've all been awesome. Some of them are here. Feel free to wave if you are. Um, and, um, and another important thing is that we've had these two workshops, uh, the previous one on Sunday and then tonight, sort of stemmed from feedback from undergraduate students. And so um, there'll definitely be more opportunities sort of throughout the upcoming week to provide feedback. And so any questions you have, anything that you'd like to see, let us know. Um, and pretty much any of the faces that you see here, you can use them as resources, um, especially these panelists, because they all have expertise and really are there to, to try to support all these undergrads. Uh, so with that, I will uh, do some brief introductions. So I'll start with myself. I'm Sam Silknetter, a uh, third year PhD candidate at Virginia Tech. Um, I study landscape genetics of aquatic invertebrates, uh, but I also do some work with um, fishes and um, sort of climate change vulnerability, which is what I'll be talking about this week. Um, shameless plug, C18 biodiversity. Uh, and so I will let my fellow moderator, Lauren, go ahead and introduce herself. Hi, so I'm Lauren Banks. Um, this is actually my first year being involved in SFS. So I've been involved in the social media committee, sort of loosely with DEI, but sort of at a sort of superficial level, I would say. So um, hopefully I can kind of get a little bit more involved as I get more involved with the society. Um, I'm a PhD candidate as well in my third year um, at the University of Waterloo in Canada. So um, representing Canada here, I guess, and researching algae, in streams, um, here I'm taking uh, some respiration measurements of cotton strips. So um, I'm sort of doing that autotroph, heterotroph uh, in streams research. And yeah, if you have any questions as the introductions are going on, um, again, feel free to type it in the chat. Or if you don't want to, um, you know, publicly ask your question, you can um, directly message Samurai. So we'll go ahead and let all of our panelists introduce themselves. So uh, panelists, when you see your 
your beautiful smiling faces, please unmute yourself and, and go ahead and take it away. Hi, I'm Lauren Wisbrock. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the social media subcommittee chair. Um, so basically what that means is running any and all of our social media accounts, including Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, and then also just kind of like helping to coordinate communication of information of what's going on in the SRC to the rest of the society. So if you've seen something that the SRC is doing, it's probably through the social media committee. Um, I have a background in education before I came and got my master's. So I'm super interested in science communication and science education. Um, and so when I finish my master's, that's kind of the route that I'm going to be pursuing. Um, and so I'm happy to talk about any and all things social media related or any and all things uh, uh, science communication related as well. That's me. My name is uh, Ellie Snyder, and I'm um, finishing up the second year of my PhD at the University of Notre Dame. And I'm also on the social media committee. I'm, I'm one of Lauren's minions. <laughs> and this year, I feel like in the, in the fall, I wasn't super involved in the committee. This is my first year being involved in the, in the SRC. And um, in the fall, I wasn't super involved, but this spring I've been dabbling a little bit in um, communicating like information from other committees to Twitter. I've been running, if you've seen <laughs> the um, Ask a Mentor Q and A's, those are all me. <laughs> um, and then this week I've also been running one of the, the Instagram takeovers where I've been sharing um, my, one of my, I'm co-advised, but one of my labs <laughs> research on Instagram. And it's been cool to kind of um, get my feet wet in terms of science communication stuff, especially this week, I feel like has been really interesting, like trying to explain my research in a way that's like to other science people, but also like fun and <laughs> social media worthy. Um, oh, and also I, so my, my research is um, on the fate and transport of environmental DNA in flowing waters. So, and this um, at SFS, I'll be presenting on some work that we did in these outdoor experimental streams at Notre Dame with common carp DNA. So I'm in the invasive species, in the invasive species session. If that interests you, you can stop by. Oh, it's me. Um, so my name is Kate Kahn. I have been around for a while. This is my fourth year to be involved in um, SRC. And it's my first year to be involved with the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, subcommittee, which has been really amazing. And um, I am in doing stream ecology research out of the University of Georgia, um, finishing up. And I um, am interested in a whole suite of stuff um, that actually ranges from um, more collaborative and um, equitable science, specifically community relevant um, when it comes to freshwater systems. Um, but my current research is really management motivated and I look at the effects of flow on ecosystem function. Um, but I'm hoping to go into a position that also continues to have a strong mentorship component. Um, as well as like a community component. So those are kind of my, my passions um, along with the science that I do um, with flow and ecosystem services. Cool. Um, I'm Libby Moore. Uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student at Montana State University and I, uh, I use she, her pronouns. And my research is focused on aquatic biogeochemistry um, mostly using a lot of modeling approaches. And then um, more recently, I've been looking into um, ecosystem engineering impacts of uh, net spitting caddisflies, which has been fun. Get to work with macroinvertebrates. Um, so I've been involved with SRC for about a year and a half now. I started out um, as a member of the DEI subcommittee. And then this past year, I've co-chaired the, the committee with Kate, who you've, um, who you've just met. Um, so I, it's probably obvious that I'm, I'm really interested in helping to make SFS um, a more diverse and equitable society. I think um, we have a lot of room to improve uh, in that space. Um, and so um, in doing so, I'm really interested in, you know, creating inclusive spaces where students can connect with each other um, and learn from one another. And so um, one of our initiatives that I want to plug um, that we're just getting started on is 
um, a DEI discussion group where we, um, you know, sort of get students together to listen to podcasts or read um, various blog posts and then get together um, maybe monthly and, and sort of just have a space where we can um, discuss those and, um, and, you know, celebrate diverse perspectives in freshwater science as, um, as students of freshwater science. So um, I think the link will be, uh, if, you, if you're interested in doing that, uh, the link will be available uh, at some point. It'll be um, available during the meeting and I'm sure it'll, you'll get emails about it after the meeting. So um, keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Thank you, Libby. And I'll also say that anybody that registered for this, I will be sending a follow up that'll include some PDFs for social media posting guides um, and any links that any of the panelists have, I'll be sure to include those. So I'm sure I will blow you all up with lots of follow up emails. Move on to Leanne. Hi, I'm Leanne. Um, I also use she, her pronouns, and I'm a fourth year PhD candidate at Indiana University. Um, and my role is as SRC chair. And so I get to work with and support all of the various SRC subcommittees. And it's just an amazing opportunity to have a hand in all of the various initiatives the SRC puts on. Um, and I get to support and work with all these amazing people that you've just heard from. So we have, you know, we're, we're always accepting new members. And we have an SRC orientation to kind of orient you <laughs> to getting involved with the SRC. And that's gonna be happening during the annual meeting on Monday. And so I'll you know, give Sam all the necessary links, but I really hope that after this session, especially you join us on Monday and fill out the necessary forms to get yourself on all the mailing lists for the SRC this next academic year. So I think with that, we are going to transition into the, uh, the Q&A portion of this. Um, and so the, the first question that I wanted to pose is one that came from um, some undergraduate students that had filled out the survey. Uh, and there was really a lot of overlap thinking about um, ways to get involved. And so the question I'll pose, and I guess maybe I'll start it with Leanne, but any of the panelists feel free to chime in, is what are the best ways to get involved with SFS and the SRC? I think uh, what you were just talking about, Leanne, is sort of a good primer, but could you expand on that just a little bit? I would love to. So I think one of the best things about SFS and the SRC in general is that everyone you talk to is going to be super kind and willing to help plug you into where you want to go. So with the SRC specifically, um, you can send an email, send a tweet. You can also go through the more official channels, join us um, for our orientation on Monday. I can give you the exact date and time. Um, it's Monday, the 23rd, 4th at 3.30 p.m. Um, Eastern time. And so that event should be popping up for you in the Cvent platform, but we'll also try and send out the Zoom link via, via Twitter. I actually don't know the appropriate channels for sharing the Zoom links for the conference events, but um, those details should be made available to you via Twitter, thanks to our amazing social media team. Um, we accept volunteers all year round. So if, you know, come fall, you realize you have the time in your schedule and want to be involved in the SRC, but didn't sign up during orientation, you can, of course, always email. There's an SRC account that you can specifically email or you can reach out via Twitter. Um, so there's always time to get involved. It's not like there's a specific window that you have to sign up in or you can't do anything with the SRC. So we're always looking for people to volunteer. Um, I think Lauren mentioned she was involved in like three or four subcommittees. So you don't have to commit to one specific subcommittee. If you're interested in DEI initiatives and social media, you can of course have your hand in both. We're always looking for leadership, um, people looking to serve in more leadership roles. So as a subcommittee chair, such as Sam or Lauren or Kate and Libby co-chair. Um, so usually we would like you to serve on the SRC as a volunteer before taking on a chair position, but that's not necessary. In fact, I served as a chair my first year involved in the SRC just because um, they were looking to fill a position. So it's 
if you're looking to have, you know, like a more leadership, more hands-on role and want to take on a chair position, that of course can be available to you. If you're also looking to volunteer in various initiatives, that's also an option. So we've got plenty of things for you to be involved in. We love working with students and at the SRC is open to any registered SFS student. That's awesome. Does anyone else have anything else they want to chime in and add to what Leanne was saying? I guess I could just say that like there's I, I Leanne kind of already said this, but like you also don't have to be <laughs> like a subcommittee chair. You can just be like someone who helps out with a couple of a couple of things here and there. And that's also great. You still get to like meet cool people and get to know people in SFS. Like it doesn't have to be uh, don't like necessarily think oh like I'm gonna have a super busy semester so like I can't I can't get involved like it could be just for one semester it could be like like only maybe you only make it to like a couple of meetings and that's also fine <laughs> yeah I think Ellie that's a really good point um that the time commitment is variable you can put in as much as much time as you have and are willing to give it's a very collaborative and cooperative organization so you know, you don't have to do the lifting yourself. We all work together. And I think that's what makes it such an awesome organization to be a part of. And I think Libby mentioned this about her first, her first year, she actually didn't get involved and Libby, correct me if I'm, I'm now making this up, but you didn't get involved, I believe at the beginning, I think it was like partway um, through the year, which is something that we've also had with people on our committee. We've had people that have had things come up in their life because that happens and they're like, you know what, I can't, I can't commit to this anymore. So I want to let you know, very professional way to do that. Totally understandable. Our lives are very busy, but we've also had the reverse where all of a sudden we have someone who's like, I really, I just learned about this, or I now have a bit more free time, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so it doesn't have to be a all or nothing timing wise either. Um, so just to kind of make that known. Oh, and then the last thing I was gonna I was gonna say, um, Sam, was the question about SRC specifically or just SFS? I think it can about be about, yeah, it can be about whatever. Um, well, the one thing I was gonna say that's very unique right now, and I, I think we'll talk a bit more about it when we get to maybe some specific DEI stuff. Um, but the Jedi Task Force, which is working on it's it's a big initiative, a multi-year initiative to really like jumpstart different programs and other like sub initiatives um, under ju justice, equity, diversity and inclusion. And they actually, you can be involved with that group outside of SRC. SRC and our subcommittee, the DEI subcommittee works with them, but they also have initiatives that you could directly um, be involved with as a student, just to kind of like, to let that be known as well. Um, I guess I'll say one more thing that's maybe a little more on the practical side. Um, I remember going on, like going to my first conference and being just like a little bit overwhelmed by all of the different things going on uh, at the conference itself. Uh, you know, and that's by the nature of like, it's the annual conference. It's kind of like the, the biggest thing that the society puts on during the year. Um, but becoming involved in the SRC has really helped me to kind of contextualize all of the different stuff that's going on, if that makes sense. Like you, by being involved and like hearing about what other committees are doing or, you know, being involved in a committee yourself, it kind of gives you an idea of like, oh, wow, this is a really interesting thing. And it might target your attention, you know, at the conference itself, which can be really helpful, like just in a practical sense, just because there are so many things going on, you know, next week specifically. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else anyone wants to add? We'll move on to another question. Okay, um, I just wanted to kind of address the social media um, part just because I'm a little bit a part of it. And I know that Warren's done a really great job this year, um, kind of getting messages out, organizing things. Um, but I do wanna talk about, you know, since the conference is coming up next week, um, just Warren, if you could kind of speak on um, what Twitter, 
what the Twitter universe is in case there's some people who aren't really on it. I just joined it a year ago, only for networking purposes. And I found it really useful, but I was just wondering if you could kind of talk about, you know, how SRC uses Twitter, um, how it connects people, what kind of community you might find on there. For sure, yeah, our Twitter, it's, uh, I'll put the handle in the chat. Um, it's basically a way for um, the, uh, society to kind of get information out there. Um, I've found that a lot of like PIs actually follow it. Like most of the people who follow it are uh, like professionals, not necessarily students, but they use it as a way to kind of share information that is going on. Um, I encourage lots of students to follow it just because I, I don't know, we try to be as clear as possible about like, here is this thing happening. Here is the link that will get you to it. Um, you know, it's, it's a great way, like during the conference itself, we'll have daily updates about, okay, here are the big things happening today. Um, just to try to like clarify, you know, here's all the different things going on, um, which you can do on the conference site too, but sometimes it's easier just in a platform that you're familiar with. Um, during the rest of the year, like outside of the conference, uh, the, the Twitter itself does a lot of retweeting of job opportunities, lab openings. Um, it will like will retweet uh, opportunities, uh, talks, other um, like if there's uh, somebody in the society that has something published that's really interesting and they tag us in it, we'll retweet it, that kind of thing. So it's a really great way, way to keep your like finger on the pulse of what's going on throughout the year and to help you kind of like organize your thoughts during the conference itself. Um, at least that's what the goal of it is. <laughs> and I hope that uh, I hope that folks find value in like following it just because it can provide lots of information, clarity and opportunities. And I guess sort of a part two of that is, you know, somebody doesn't really know what to post, might there be something like a, that they might be able to get to help them figure out what content and what hashtags to use? Yeah, so if you are trying to figure out your, your own online presence, um, in terms of freshwater science, there are a, like there is a very large freshwater science community on Twitter, and it can be really fun to get involved in, um, just because I think people see the Twitter space as like a less formal way to talk about their science. Um, so in terms of specific hashtags, it's really you know, I, I guess the big ones are things like hashtag team fish, you know, uh, <laughs> things like that, or hashtag team uh, fish. Macro fight Monday. How macro can fight you Monday. Macro fight Monday? Come on. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there, there's like some fun community things that go on. Um, but if you want to like get involved and start kind of creating uh, a, an online presence for yourself, I wouldn't say it's necessarily like I don't know, like a requirement to be successful. It's definitely a tool for success, but it's by no means like the only way that you can put yourself out there. Um, honestly, I would say, especially for people who are newer in the field, it's kind of a great way to kind of like lurk and listen and see what kind of conversations are happening. Um, and then as you, you know, gain experience, uh, get to know people a little bit better, you can become part of those conversations in really cool ways. Um, I know, uh, like from my experience, I like followed people on Twitter leading up to my first conference and then got to meet them in person at the conference itself. So like, that was something that was really cool for me where like, I didn't necessarily like post a lot of stuff on my personal account, but I like followed a bunch of people to see what was going on. And I just want to say that now it's been two years of virtual meetings and like I feel like there are a hundred people that I am Twitter friends with or Zoom friends with that like I'm so excited to meet and so um, I actually think that because this is a virtual meeting like trying to use social media if you want to do it you will never get a better networking experience than like the content explosion of this next week like Honestly, I'm as active in this next week as I will be in the next 51. So like um, just something to think about. I know that that's unnecessary pressure, but uh, yeah, I mean, I do think that Twitter can also help you to sort of navigate um, what is definitely a very busy week. So I'll, I'll just say that. Oh, uh, Sam, we just had another sort of follow-up question um, in the chat for the social media stuff. Um, I think this is kind of a good topic to spend maybe some time on just since the conference is coming up and all these hashtags and posting and stuff. Um, so this question was um, about how do you um, manage the time spent working on, it, working on these accounts? Like how active um, should you be? How often should you check in? Like what sort of content maybe like retweeting versus your own tweets? Um, so yeah, maybe if you can just 
comment on that, what might be appropriate for an entry entry level person? Honestly, it, it really is up to you. I personally, like, it's something that I really enjoy. And so I check my Twitter every day. I check the SRC Twitter multiple times a day, just because like, it's, uh, it's something that I really like, I see myself as like continuing to do after my degree. So it's definitely something that I focus on. Um, but like, I don't know, maybe other people can speak about their experience on Twitter too, because I think everybody's experience is going to be different. Um, I guess the one thing I would say is that it's good to be self-reflective as to when social media presence becomes um, maybe like a way of distracting yourself. I know for myself personally, I have to kind of take a step back and be like, all right, how much of this is like actually networking, actually being part of these kinds of conversations versus how much is it I'm procrastinating on the work that I actually have to do. Um, so that's always just like an important dynamic to make sure that you're kind of like reflecting on as you use your Twitter. I can kind of add to that because I feel like I'm on the other end of the spectrum from Lauren is that like I'm a complete novice um, and I related hard to what Sam said about like being super active this next week and then probably not for the next year. <laughs> um, so I don't have the app on my phone and I think that has helped me step away from it, you know, when I don't actually need to be doing something. Otherwise, I find myself like scrolling on my phone and wasting a bunch of time just like randomly scrolling and reading all these tweets. So I only access it on the computer, like, you know, maybe once a day. Um, and that has really helped me like really narrow down actually making a productive use of Twitter because it is a really great tool. Um, and it's a really great way to meet other freshwater people, even outside of SFS. One thing I'll add to that is, um, and this is kind of perhaps the mention here there's I think there's a big difference between like checking it to just see kind of what's going on and see if things pop up for you um that might be of interest some of it's entertaining like when I was joking about macrophyte Monday like that's just it's fun it's like I forget the find the lizard stuff if you're aware with that like it's just a, it's a fun way to engage with science um and so those can be enjoyable things to do during your day um but on the flip side of that like the things that you do with intention I think can be really important. And so I am moving into the stage of looking for a postdoc position. And so I don't particularly post questions very often. Like that's not how I normally engage with Twitter, but I recently, a couple, maybe like a month or so back posted, you know, like how do I even find postdoc um, fellowship position? It's like, so you're applying for your own research, not necessarily like a job board. And I got an incredible response. And so I feel like knowing that that's an option as well, like, okay, I can check for fun. I can check to stay up on particular accounts, but then also to remember that there are opportunities to also use it as um, a resource for getting, um, getting answers to some questions, right? From a, a big group of people. And I don't have a lot of Twitter followers. So this happened through like people reposting it for me and like me also literally tagging SFS, ASLO, it's Etc. I was like, I'm going to get some people to answer this, <laughs> um, just to kind of throw that idea out there as well. So using it as a resource for a particular question. Yeah, if you want to get word out there, tag the SRC account. We will retweet it as long as it's whoop, as long as it's appropriate, right? Uh, and we will get your word out there for you. I know we've spent a long time on this question, but I have two practical suggestions. I only use Twitter on my phone and I set a time limit for myself because I think that's really important for me, not <laughs> but like using Twitter in a productive way versus it wasting time. And then also I feel like when you first get onto Twitter, it can be super overwhelming, like not knowing who you want to follow. So if you have like a lab mate or like someone like, or someone maybe even in this, in this, um, panel today it can be great to like go to their account and see who they're following and then just go through and be like oh this looks like an interesting person that i'd like to follow because i think that that was when i first like, like try start trying to engage with science but i was like i don't know where to start i don't know who's on here and that's a great way to find people i think it's quick and easy 
Yeah, Ellie, I think that's awesome advice. And yeah, definitely like all of these people that you see on your, you know, Zoom gallery, like those people, if they're on Twitter, like they will follow you, they will retweet you. And so um, it is just kind of another way to sort of build community. Um, but with that, I think that's awesome. Oh yeah, the Twitter list, maybe we can go to that real quick because I also don't understand that. <laughs> Um, so the way a list works on Twitter is that basically it creates a news feed for you, but only from people who are members of the list. And so we put out a tweet, uh, we put out a reminder on Wednesday, I think was the last time we tweeted about it. But if you want to be on that list, just, you know, fill out the Google form, you get added to the list, and then your stuff gets onto the news feed with all of the other people who asked to be on the list. And this one, it's specifically for people who are attending the SFS conference. So um, if you go to the SRC Twitter, go to lists and see the hashtag 2021 SFS list, that's just a news feed of people who are attending SFS this uh, next week. So that can be a good way to just see who's a member, see what they're up to, uh, a nice, like, uh, newsfeed, I guess, that's already um, aimed at SFS stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some of the, the DEI initiatives, I think. So Kate and Libby, this is kind of geared towards you. Kate's getting excited. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the first question is, what resources or support are available to students who identify as underrepresented in freshwater science or maybe STEM more broadly? Um, but then also, you know, what sort of ongoing initiatives do you all have um, that you're involved with, either with your committee or sort of the SFS group more broadly? Libby, are you okay if I uh, jump in on this and then yeah. can you jump in if I, okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask, you go ahead. Um, there's always dynamics when you have co-chairs, but it's also fun. <laughs> um, so we have really been working really hard this year to start a lot of different things. Um, and luckily, a lot of that has meant plugging ourselves into other SRC committees as well as greater SFS committees. Um, and so we actually know about a lot of what's happening um, within SFS in general and the opportunities that are available to underrepresented students. So to kind of hit the question specifically of what resources and or support um, are available to students who identify as underrepresented in freshwater science or our society. Um, there are two programs that you can't join this year, but would be available to you next year, which are NSTARS and Emerge program. Um, so NSTARS is the meeting specific, it's for undergraduates. It's essentially a way to, um, support students who have never been um, to the annual meeting, give them, give them both um, support through the meeting, but also like a cohort, um, a group to um, be with during the meeting process. The Emerge program is way expanded from that. It's also available to undergrads, but it also extends to graduate students and early career students. Um, and it's year round. So this is the first kickoff year for this, but both will again be available next year. Um, JEDI, which I mentioned um, a little uh, a second ago, I think, um, is having, um, they have a number of initiatives that are happening. And some of these, I think, offer, um, they offer ways that might support you depending upon your identity, right? So they have an initiative in Spanish that's going to really be expanding in the types of tools and support that's um, given to Spanish speakers. And so that's something that right now I can't tell you a specific but that's one of the like sub initiatives that really might provide opportunity in the future. Um, we as a committee, as the DEI subcommittee have been working on a number of things. One of which is no strings attached um, funding that could potentially be used for a number of costly aspects of um, especially the meeting. Um, so membership is quite a bit less, but then there's the annual meeting which usually involves travel, right? So the registration and travel. Um, this is something in the works, but hopefully this is something that will be available in the future. Um, and then there are some specific endowment awards that are available to um, groups of people that um, are definitely underrepresented. So a big area of this is due to geographic location, um, specifically the global south. Um, and so there are specific endowment, of fund, um, endowment funds for um, students from Latin America, um, from Australia, and then just broadly non-North American students. And so I, I definitely want to mention those. Um, and so to, to summarize, like the support system there is 
the NSARS and More Emerge program offers both mentorship as well as funding. Um, we are working as a subcommittee of SRC to get a different type of funding that doesn't involve kind of the strings attached is the way we're describing it. Um, basically, we recognize that that not everybody wants or needs um, um, that level of support or can have that level of commitment. And so we're looking for other ways to um, create an inclusive environment and a more diverse environment that don't require that type of commitment, right? So the no strings attached stuff, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out of Je um, JEDI. Um, and then there's also specific endowment awards. Um, so those are like current things that are being offered. And then I think you also asked me to hit on like the things we're doing right now. Was that correct? Like the initiatives? Okay. Um, so again, our, our one of our biggest goals this year was to really try and plug in to um, get our hands into <laughs> all of the other things going on at um, both within SRC, but also SFS in general, because there's been not just this past year, I know there's been just a big push nationally this past year and globally um, to really make progress in areas of diversity, inclusion, and equity. But also this has been building within SFS. And so there already are existing groups. So we have an education diversity um, committee that's a greater SFS. And when I say greater SFS, I mean, it's not part of the student resources committee. Um, and so we have a liaison on that committee. Um, we also have a liaison on the Jedi task force, which I've mentioned, and that's that multi-year um, task force that isn't necessarily going to be permanent, but is really trying to like hit the ground running to get some of these important programs going. Um, we also, um, so we've been working with them to make sure we're in constant communication. That's been like a big goal for us is to make sure that we know what's going on outside of our group, what opportunities are available, and to make sure that we're um, working together in a way that doesn't, that's efficient and helping each other as much as we can. Um, some other cool things that we're doing, like kind of product-based, the really one, I'm one, you know, I'm really excited about that Libby has been spearheading that's coming up is this discussion group um, that she just talked about. Um, and I, and I, I really want to underscore one of the important aspects of that group is not that it's just focusing on something like education, but also celebration. Um, so that's really intentional that the material, the media in whatever form it's going to take um, is going to both be exploring um, diversity of perspectives and issues, but also, you know, the celebration of those things as well, um, of those perspectives. Um, Cause I think that's often something that has, um, been missing from a, a lot of like the reading groups, right? It's focused a lot more on um, education of struggles and barriers. And so we want to make sure that there's a celebratory aspect. Um, so that's up and coming, really exciting. Um, and then the other two, I would say, so plugging ourselves into these other groups, this discussion group coming up, um, continuing to work on this financial funding that we were talking about, that's a multi-year effort. So if you are interested in being part of the DEI group, this is something that's going to require multiing on it, working on it for multiple years because establishing funding sources is just, it's a big, it's a big task, right? Um, and then the last one is um, this event planning forum that um, I've been working on really hard and have a, I've had a lot of help from people who have given feedback, people on the committee, people external to the committee, another great example of like, you don't have to do a ton. You can do something, you know, just as, as simple as like helping look over things and provide ideas. Um, so the idea here is how can we create events that really start from a foundation of considering um, celebration of diverse perspectives, barriers to people based on a whole suite of um, things in their identity, their backgrounds, um, their experiences, um, from the beginning, from the get-go of planning an event. Um, and so we've been working on something that steps you through this process of planning your event and at different steps saying, okay, who is putting, who's, who's deciding the goal of this event? Who's putting feedback? Like, who are you getting feedback from? What does that group of people look like, sound like? What identities do they involve? Really trying to get to this nitty gritty of like, asking hard questions to make sure you're considering it. What are the financial barriers? Are there barriers based on if you have family commitments. Like it really, it's a very um, broad brush of trying to make sure that there's a lot of things that are considered. So this is supposed to be a tangible product um, that we can use hopefully in this upcoming year. It's still in process. 
Um, and we've been working both with SRC people, but also with the Jedi Task Force and other groups that have been doing DEI work at SFS for a while to get their input um, on, on how they think it could be improved so that it will actually get used, right? Um, a lot of people really want to see great work happening um, in our society to better it, but it's really, sometimes it's hard to know how to do it, to actually do the steps, right? To get past the intent and into the action. And so this form is really meant to get us there. So I know that that was kind of a lot, a lot of <laughs> talking. I don't, I, I think I got everything. Let me tell me if I missed something. <laughs> no, I think you got it all, Kate. Cool. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. I think that's one of the things like sort of, you know, jump, coming into DEI kind of late, maybe with like two or three meetings left, but just to kind of see what kind of progress you guys are making, um, especially with these sort of products with that event planning form is something I'm like definitely very interested in is getting like actual feedback to measure changes. Of course, as a scientist, we want to measure everything. So yeah, thanks for that. I think the DEI committee is pretty um, well set up for next year as well. So um, I guess sort of kind of building on that, you know, it can be kind of difficult maybe to put yourself out there to sign up for committees where you don't really know anybody or um, don't have experience um, or if you don't think you have experience. So um, I guess this is just for anyone who is on any subcommittee. Um, sort of how did you come to your current position? Um, was it just sort of you randomly signed up or um, you kind of got involved and then got more involved or how did that kind of um, play out for you? I guess I, I can speak to that a little bit because, um, yeah, I think as Kate mentioned, I sort of joined the DEI subcommittee halfway through the year. Um, and I remember being at the meeting like six months prior when everybody else was joining the subcommittees and seeing like the SRC orientation and being looking at it and being like, oh, I don't want to go to that. Like, I'm probably going to have to like introduce myself to people and like, <laughs> like pretend like I'm an extrovert for like an hour and just be exhausted afterwards. Um, so, um, which is to say, like, you know, I probably would have benefited from pretending like I was an extrovert for, um, for an hour, but um, which is also to say that, you know, it doesn't matter if you get involved halfway um, through the year. But yeah, I, I just remember seeing an email, um, like one of the SFS emails and at the bottom, it was like, oh, SRC is looking for more members. So I replied to that because um, I was interested in meeting uh, more students and getting involved. And um, yeah, so then I, um, I think the chair at the time, Shannon said like, oh, the DEI subcommittee needs more members. And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll join that committee. So it was a little bit serendipitous, um, you know, that I was both interested in that and they, they needed more members. Um, and then the, the chair position opened up and, and um, yeah, I was willing to step up. So it, it was, it wasn't really like a, like a, like planned, like logical path. It just sort of like happened and, and here I am. And I know that I'm like technically a moderator, but one thing that I feel like I, I wanna like answer as a panelist is, is that, um, so I'm at Virginia Tech, like there's lots of opportunities to get involved at your own university in terms of leadership, but sometimes like you just want a, a different group. Like sometimes you just want like different perspectives. And so, you know, as undergraduates or maybe early on graduate students are sort of thinking about like, how can I build sort of not just my network, but also like my, my resume and my CV, like what, you know, sort of experience can I have? I mean, I've now served as a committee chair for two years and like, that's really awesome experience. And like, I've made so many new friends from this also. And like, I, I'm certainly going to be an SFS, you know, member for life because like I've built these relationships. And so um, it's really a joy to get to work with them. And sometimes it's, you know, you don't want to overcommit yourself, but it can be a really great way to like channel your energy um, in a space that's separate from like your research community within your own university. So um, yeah, like lots of different paths. I'll let some others answer too, but um, yeah, just a very rewarding and different set of faces, which I think in itself is, is really helpful. Um, I personally was peer pressured into joining the SRC. Um, if any of you guys knew Lisa Kim, she was the uh, social media chair before me. She's just a very convincing person. Um, and uh, I was like very, very hesitant and didn't really know what to expect at all. I was not planning on getting involved. 
Um, but I, it, I guess this might be one of the cases where peer pressure was a really good thing. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that I will say too, is that I know for me, I really love to get to know people through working together, if that makes sense. Like you get to see how people problem solve and um, like coming up with creative solutions with people. Um, and I know like last year, since we kind of had to throw a virtual conference together almost on the fly, uh, uh, with everything that happened so quickly, um, it was really great to just kind of build relationships in that way. So like, if you're not the kind of person, like I know I, I so relate to Libby where it's like, it's so awkward to like not know people and to just start a conversation. Um, but if you like working with other people in a way to get to know them, I think that's a really great thing that the SRC can provide. Awesome. Lauren, do you want to add something? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of add, you know, um, I think one of the benefits that I've seen just sort of, you know, from the sidelines is that, you know, I've seen Lauren really like take sort of leadership and control over social media. So you have a lot of latitude into kind of making, seeing what you value and trying and experimenting. Um, sort of not like there's no consequences per se, but because you're sort of learning with other people and you can collaborate, um, I've seen Lauren like really do a really great job of being the, um, uh, subcommittee chair and sort of leading initiatives and getting more information out there in a really sort of palatable way. So I think that is something too that you can kind of think of as these committees, you can just kind of sort of go your own way and come up with your own ideas. So I think that's something that I really found beneficial just kind of watching her, I guess. That's awesome. And Leanne, I love your comment in here. You're tearing up, you know, that's, that's our president, everyone. And, and she's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's just like one more reason to join, right? Like just get calm, get complimented. <laughs> I think in terms of like practical things for next week though, like I like looking at what Kate posted, um, like in terms of to next week, you know, if you are intimidated or nervous or don't know like where to go to, going into these talks and talking with people who are passionate about the same things that you are can be a really great like first step. That's great. And I'm going to share a couple of resources here at the end. Um, I think maybe let's just, I was going to ask a question about grad school, but um, instead of doing that, I guess if the panelists have any sort of closing thoughts, like a last minute thing, whether it's advice for the meeting, anything, um, you know, maybe each of you can just kind of take like 30 seconds if you want, if you have any, any final thoughts or things you want to sort of reiterate. I kind of wanted to reiterate Libby's point about like feeling nervous to go to a meeting in which she didn't know anyone. Um, and I can see that being a barrier to especially with these online events where you just like join a zoom call and hope for the best. Um, so I can, you know, I can see the hesitation there in, in getting involved, but I hope that this, if this has shown you anything is that we're a really open and welcoming group of people. And I hope that, you know, you take the chance and you come to the zoom meetings and a bunch of other, you know, meetings, regardless of whether or not they're geared towards students or you think you're going to be um, part of that group, because SFS in general, I think, is a very welcoming society. Um, it's full of very kind people. And so putting yourself out there just a little bit will go a really long way. This isn't necessarily a closing thought, but I would recommend during the conference next week, just like while you're watching talks, maybe having a little notebook beside you. And if you find something, if like something is interesting or like there's a talk that you know beforehand is gonna be really relevant to like you and your interests, then like take a little note about like who the presenter was and like questions that you have maybe because I feel like my, the first time I attended SFS, I didn't do enough of that. And I'm like, I don't remember anything that happened. So it's really nice to be able to look back and be like, oh yeah, I'm Monday I attended that great talk and like maybe I'm going to shoot this person an email and say like oh I had this question or something like that so I think that's a really that's such an important point so I have I have two closing thoughts that jump piggyback on different things one on what she was just saying like don't be afraid to contact people um and there's always different levels by which you can do that right so like you don't have to approach someone that you might be the most intimidated by you can ask for assistance 
assistance from an advisor, from another student, um, if that's something that's more comfortable approaching one of the graduate students. But if you, I would say for the most part, people are really excited to talk about their science, <laughs> right? Like we don't always get a ton of questions and we could probably, you know, talk forever about it. And so like, if you really, if you find something interesting, like there's so many steps that you can take of just like looking it up afterwards, looking at a website, looking just more into what they're working on, but then also even contacting them. Um, that's something that I just never would have thought to do before I came to a meeting and realized like, oh, I can actually really talk to these people. Um, the, se the second thing I'll say is that um, I, I don't think I could stress how much I've learned by participating in um, SRC in both leadership positions, but also just in understanding how things work in a society like this um, and watching others grow in, in the flexibility that um, Lauren Banks was talking about, like being able to watch people be passionate about something and take it, change it, mold it to what they want to um, see it be. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm really passionate about making science look a little different from what it looks like right now. Um, you know, there's things that I don't love about it and I want it to look better in the future. And that's the approach I took with the student mentor mixer when I was working with that. That's the approach that I know, you know, Libby and I have taken with DEI committee and that's really exciting. Um, and for me, it's just inspired me to be able to see this impact that isn't just my little hub of people working on exactly what I'm working on, or like Sam said, my hub of the people at my university. It just makes it feel so much bigger and more impactful. Um, I guess for my last spiel here, if you uh, are interested in uh, like how to communicate science through social media, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Tag our account because we will retweet uh, and you know, if there's something, if there was a talk that you really loved and want to shout it out and be like, oh my gosh, I love this, you know, we'll, we'll get it to the person so that they know. Um, if there's something that you're unsure about, or like, I have no idea what's going on right now, feel free to like DM the account, right? Like these are, we're resources. Like all of these people here are real people. We care about your experience of next week. Um, and we want you to have the best one possible. So like, you know, obviously use the tools that are out there, but worst comes to worst, like person to person contact, reach out, we're here for you. Awesome. Any other last minute thoughts from anyone? Okay. So I'm just, I have a couple of like sort of wrap up things that I wanted to talk about. Um, so um, just a couple of events. So I think, Leanne, this is what you were talking about. So we have the SRC orientation, which is Monday, May 24th um, from 3.30 to 5. Uh, and um, there's also then the, the student mentor mixer. Um, so this is Wednesday, May 26th from 4 to 5. Um, and I was going to ask questions about grad school, but um, Anna Vincent, who's the committee chair for that, is has a really great event put together. So there's actually going to be four different sessions going on. Um, and they ask that you try to just like stick with one of them, but one of them is specifically for undergraduates and thinking about graduate school. So this is just something that they shared. Um, I'll be able to share this QR code with you so you don't have to scan it right now if you don't want. Um, but basically, um, they're doing this series of they're calling next steps. And so one of them is a next step like undergraduates, what is the next step in pursuing graduate school and so um, I'm actually going to be on that panel and I'm really excited to sort of see uh, what the questions are. And so that's a really great resource. We didn't want to double dip. So um, if you have grad student questions, definitely make sure that you attend that. Um, and Anna's contact info, again, I can share that with the, the resources or take a quick screenshot. You have five seconds and then I'll advance. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, another thing, so the undergrad affairs committee, um, one thing that one of our members is, Fe yeah, Phoenix is here. Uh, shout out to Phoenix for, for really spearheading this. And I know some other committee members were really involved with this too. Um, so if you want, um, go ahead and send us an email if you're not on Twitter and we can make sure that we share um, this bingo card with you. But the idea is that these are different you know, if you fill out this bingo card, you can get one of the Great Lakes stickers and we will mail it to you at no cost. Um, the idea is to try to get you all motivated and excited. And so by filling out this bingo card, I think is a really great way to sort of check things off of your box and really put yourself out there. Um, so yeah, I'm just really, yeah, so thrilled that this came together, um, which is awesome. 
Um, so just another thing, um, if you have additional questions, we've talked about this a little bit already, um, but we have this email for undergrad affairs. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. We'll be checking that pretty regularly. I mean, you know, probably like every hour throughout the week of the conference. Um, there's info on the um, SFS website. So, you know, these frequently asked questions, um, as Lauren Wisbrock was saying, use the Twitter at SFS um, underscore SRC. You can get information there. Um, and then this is another QR code that we just are setting up this group me. Um, and so this is for um, the undergraduate affairs committee, but it's, it's several of us um, as members and the idea is students, you can use this to sort of ask whatever questions you want. You can use it to um, share your own contact information if you want to go to these coffee sessions together or the coffee breaks. So really just like a, another informal way that you can use to communicate with one another. So we'll be sure to share that as well. Um, let me see. Yeah, free sticker. That's right, Phoenix. Um, okay, so I think with that, um, Lauren Wisbrock, we can go ahead and stop sharing or stop recording.